Hi guys, welcome to my third skill video. In this one we're going to run through a uh, finger thoracostomy. So a finger thoracostomy is a fairly simple procedure where we create a surgical opening in the chest wall and we do this to allow for the uh, free drainage of any blood or air which has accumulated in the pleural space either due to trauma or some other pathology. Uh, and the idea is to relieve the compressive force that this accumulation is exerting upon the heart, lungs and great vessels. In the pre-hospital environment, we'll perform this procedure uh, when we have an actual or a suspected tension in thorax. Um, if we suspect that there's any barotrauma occurring due to uh, mechanical ventilation, um, and in the setting of a traumatic cardiac arrest where we have some suspected chest involvement, um, we can perform this as a uh, routine uh, exclusion of reversible causes of, of arrest. Um, we wouldn't, however, perform it after prolonged resuscitation, as there's no benefit, or um, if there is an isolated head injury which has caused the traumatic cardiac arrest. So in order to perform our thoracostomy, there's a few things that we're going to need. Um, firstly, we need some sterile gloves to go over the top of our pre-existing work gloves um, in a sort of double layer fashion. Uh, we need a chloroprep or some other kind of skin uh, sterilizer. This one's a pre-packaged uh, unit. We need a scalpel to get through the skin and subcutaneous tissue. We need some forceps to dissect the intercostal muscles. This is a curved uh, Kelly clamp. We also need a, a three-sided occlusive dressing or some other kind of um, chest seal. I've just made one from a tegiderm here. To begin the procedure, the patient is placed supine and their arm is abducted to 90 degrees. Uh, it's best to place the hand behind the head uh, because that keeps the arm out of the way and it gives you very good exposure to the rib cage on that side. We then need to identify our triangle of safety, which is um, bordered superiorly by the base of the axilla, anteriorly by the lateral border of the pectoralis major, posteriorly by the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi and inferiorly by the nipple line or the mammary fold in women. This area here. Now target is the fourth intercostal uh, space, um, slightly anterior to the axillary line. So once we've identified our triangle of safety, we're going to palpate down to the fourth intercostal space and we're going to mark that area here ready for our incision. From here we will prepare the skin at the incision site uh, using our chloroprep and we'll try to cover as wide an area as we can um, to prevent uh, any risk of infiltration of bacteria. Uh, we'll then apply our sterile gloves and our eye protection and, and face protection. When our skin preparation has dried, we'll create a four centimetre incision at the fourth intercostal space uh, and we're trying to make our way through the subcutaneous tissue uh, to expose the intercostal muscles. As we locate the top of the fifth rib, uh, we'll use our forceps to dissect the intercostal muscles and through uh, the parietal pleura into the thorax. This may take quite a bit of force, so it's a good idea to hold your forceps um, quite firmly on the shaft with a bit, uh, with about uh, four or five centimeters um, of forcep exposed beyond your fingers, so that when you push through the pleura into the um, into the thorax, you don't extend those uh, forcep tips too far into the into the thorax, potentially injuring the lung. In order to strip the muscles from the top of the fifth rib, you may need to um, move your forceps around quite a bit, um, up and down, side to side. You can open your forceps and retract them whilst open. Uh, whichever way, uh, you can manage to create a tract big enough for your finger to go through. We then confirm that we've entered the pleural space by inserting our finger and in a 360 degree sweeping motion, uh, we feel the inside of the rib cage for the uh, parietal pleura which should feel very smooth. 
Um, we also feel for the visceral pleura uh, and the expanding lung tissue as the uh, tension is released. Once we've achieved this, we need to apply our chest seal or our three-sided occlusive dressing. Um, this is to prevent any uh, air infiltrating the pleural space as the person breathes in. Um, if we're using a three-sided dressing, we need to ensure that our draining, drainage side faces downward to allow for the blood uh, to flow out if there is any inside the pleural space. In a patient who is ventilated uh, with positive pressure, this three-sided dressing or the chest seal may not be necessary and in fact could potentially increase your risk uh, of occlusion and retention. Now this is a fairly simple procedure, but there are a few things to consider. Um, firstly, it's important uh, when you're landmarking for your initial incision that you aim high, um, particularly on the right side, as if you uh, look at where the liver sits, you can see it sits quite superior. Um, if, you, if you're too low, you may end up lacerating the liver, particularly if there's uh, a gastrothorax or something present. Anyone who is receiving an open thoracostomy like this uh, really should be intubated and ventilated with positive pressure. Um, this is because spontaneous respiration generates a negative pressure which will actually drag air through into the pleural space, uh, which is something that we're really trying to avoid. Um, you can have an open thoracostomy with spontaneous ventilation, but it's going to decrease your ventilatory uh, sufficiency and efficiency rather. So it's, uh, it's best to have positive pressure ventilation if possible. It's also important to regularly reassess for occlusion of your thoracostomy. Um, if you're using a chest seal that may clot over with blood um, or other fluids, um, or if the patient is placed supine on a bed in a stretcher with their arms by their side, for example, um, the anatomy of their arm by their side may cause that occlusion in its own right. And of course, there's the risk of infection. Um, this is an invasive procedure where we're entering someone's pleural cavity. So um, it might be beneficial to, um, if you have time, to administer some broad spectrum antibiotics, uh, but you may be well underway with other tasks if you're performing thoracostomies in the field. And that concludes my demonstration of a finger thoracostomy.